We live on a tiny rock floating around the sun. The entire solar system is orbiting around the center of Milky Way and the Milky Way is falling into the Andromeda galaxy. The entire universe is expanding, causing all groups of galaxies to move away from one another over time. Let that sink in. Earth is not the only planet in our solar system. We also have Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. There are also dwarf planets, such as Iris, Makemake, Ceres and Pluto. Our rock has a tiny partner, the Moon. Although it appears big, it's fifth uh, biggest moon of our solar system. The biggest one is Ganymede, Jupiter's moon. Jupiter's great red spot is a giant storm, larger than Earth, and uh, it has been raging for at least 400 years. Jupiter's magnetic field is so strong that we can hear its influence in radio signal. We also can uh, see space. On old TVs, part of the noise is cosmic microwave background, which is a relic of Big Bang. Most of the planets have moons. The only planets without them are Venus and Mercury. A day on Venus is longer than a year on Venus. It takes about 243 Earth days to rotate once, but only 225 Earth days to orbit the Sun. Our Moon keeps on flying away from us. At one point, billions of years ago, it was 10 times closer than it is now. Currently, Moon is flying further roughly 4 centimeters per year. Well, Moon is not the only thing we can see on our night sky. We also have stars and uh, auroras. Auroras are caused by sun particles uh, hitting our magnetic field, which protects us. Do you have magnets on your refrigerator? Well, that magnet is stronger than Earth's magnetic field. On Mars, auroras also exist, but they are not visible to the naked eye. But wait, why are planets called planets? Greeks called them planetes, which meant wanderers, travelers. These objects traveled across the night sky, moving in front of stars and stars are objects that are not moving. So, back in the days, Sun was also a planet, as well as the Moon. Speaking of the past, sharks are older than the rings of Saturn, meaning that there was a time in history when sharks were already swimming through Earth's oceans, while Saturn was ringless. Rings are made out of rocks and ice. Technically, uh, other planets also have rings, but uh, the only ones easily visible are the ones of Saturn and Uranus. Saturn's North Pole has a bizarre, persistent hexagon-shaped storm system over 30,000 kilometers wide. Uranus rotates on its side with an axial tilt of 98 degrees. This means that it essentially orbits the Sun rolling along, like a barrel. We have sent satellites here and there. The furthest satellite currently is Voyager 1, 25 billion kilometers from Earth. The fastest moving satellite is Parker Probe orbiting the Sun with a speed of almost 700,000 km per hour. For example, ISS that is orbiting Earth is moving at the speed of just 27,000 km an hour. Distance from Earth to Moon is around 380,000 km, which means that Parker Probe would get there within 30 minutes, ISS would need around 14 hours, right? Light would need a little over one second to get to the Moon. But wait, do you know what does it mean? We do not see the moon live, we see it as it was over one second ago. Same goes for all the objects in the universe. For example, we see the sun as it was 8 minutes ago, Betelgeuse as it was 700 years ago, and the Andromeda galaxy as it was 2.5 million years ago. Speaking of Betelgeuse, do you know that it will explode one day? Sun's uh, faith is the same, it will expand and then explode. It's unavoidable. But going back to Betelgeuse, if it would explode today, all of a sudden, the luminosity of Betelgeuse would spike by about a factor of 7000. It would go from one of the brightest stars in the night sky to the brightness of a thin crescent moon, about 40 times brighter than the planet Venus. Betelgeuse is not the brightest star out there. Uh, ignoring planets, moon and the sun, the brightest star of the northern sky is Arcturus, and the southern hemisphere, it is Sirius. Okay, but the brightest doesn't mean the closest, okay? Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to Earth after the Sun, located 4.25 light years away in the southern constellation of Centaurus. Well, there are many other stars. Milky Way itself contains between 100 to 400 billion of them. It is estimated that there is a similar number of planets in our galaxy. A planet orbiting uh, other star uh, than the Sun is called exoplanet. Potential planets orbiting around black holes are planets, uh, yes, yes, interstellar and stuff. So far, we've discovered almost 6,000 exoplanets. So why is Earth so special? 
Well, it's the only base we know of uh, where the situation is perfect for life uh, as we know to exist. One of the key conditions is for water not to be frozen and not to vapor away. Earth exists in Goldilocks zone of the solar system, a place with perfect conditions for water to be in a liquid state. Okay, okay, other star systems also have Goldilocks zones. We discovered a lot of exoplanets that are in Goldilocks zone, but the technology is not there yet to determine whether there is life out there. But well, hundreds of billions of stars in our Milky Way, with hundreds of uh, billions of other galaxies in the observable universe, we are definitely not alone. Wait, observable universe? What does it mean? Uh, the observable universe is a spherical region of the universe consisting of all matter that can be observed from Earth. Why can't we see beyond it? Because the speed of light is finite and the universe keeps on expanding. Uh, this means that even if we could travel that close uh, to the speed of light, most of the universe is out of our reach, like forever. With current technology, only solar system remains within our direct physical reach. We've done unbelievable things, like really. Cassini-Huygens' mission uh, to Saturn was launched in 1997, and uh, it discovered new moons, uh, studied Saturn's rings, and landed uh, the Huygens probe on Titan, revealing lakes and uh, rivers of liquid methane and ethane. We also had many Mars NASA rover missions, including uh, Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity and Perseverance. And they have explored Mars' surface, searching for signs of past life and studying the planet's climate and geology. We've also had New Horizons that was launched in 2006. This mission flew by Pluto in uh, 2015, uh, providing the first close-up images of the dwarf planet and its moon. We've also had Juno mission. Uh, this spacecraft was launched in 2011, and it has been studying Jupiter's atmosphere, magnetic field, and weather patterns since 2016. We've also had, and we still have, Parker Solar Probe. It was launched in 2018. It's uh, studying Sun's outer atmosphere, aiming to understand solar wind and space weather. Next, Kepler Space Telescope, launched in 2009. It discovered thousands of exoplanets, revolutionizing our understanding of planets outside of our solar system. And let's not forget James Webb Space Telescope, launched a few years ago. It was set to study the universe in infrared, providing insights into the formation of stars, planets, and galaxies. And the legend, Hubble Space Telescope, who provided us with a cosmos we've never seen before. The Hubble Space Telescope was repaired through a series of space shuttle missions, notably the first serving mission in 1993, where astronauts installed a corrective optics to fix a flaw in the telescope's primary mirror. Yes, out there in space. A first airplane flight was done in 1903, and just 66 years later, we abandoned our planet to land on other celestial body, the Moon. NASA's Integrity Mars helicopter completed 72 historic flights on other planets. Going back to galaxies, our solar system is orbiting around the center of Milky Way. But why? Because of a supermassive black hole. Each galaxy has one in their core. What are other crazy objects out there? Well. A pulsar is a highly magnetized rotating neutron star which can spin with a speed of 72,000 rotates per minute. A neutron star is the collapsed core of a massive supergiant star. It results from supernova explosion of a massive star. For example, there is one in Crab Nebula. But nebulas are also sterile nurseries where stars are being born. Not all of them are extremely bright, but for example Orion Nebula can be seen with a naked eye. Uh, if Tarantula Nebula was as close to Earth as Orion Nebula, it would be as bright as the Moon. Here is my photo of uh, Ring Nebula, and here is Hubble's photo of Ring Nebula. Ring Nebula is an example of a planetary nebula. A planetary nebula is a type of emission nebula consisting of expanding glowing shell of ionized gas ejected from red giant stars late in their lives. But going back to black holes, they are created when massive star collapse at the end of their lives. A teaspoon-sized black hole would weigh as much as a planet. If Earth would be compressed strongly enough to become a black hole, it would be the size of a coin. Black holes are so strong that even light can't escape their gravity. Even time is crazy around them. It slows down by huge factors. Uh, yeah, yeah, interstellar again. And it's not science fiction. Time dilation was scientifically proven. It's not only caused by the gravity and mass, but also by the speed. The faster you move, the slower time takes for you. But no, you can't travel at the speed of light. Basically, everything that has mass can't travel at the speed of light. Everything that doesn't have mass has to travel at the speed of light. 
A quantum entanglement is an exception where information seems to be traveling instantly, even across the universe. But the video has ended now and I don't have no more time to explain it. Bye!